Lynn struggles on the streets on a windy weekday. This is a morning in September, so round about prelim time. She has used a big percentage of her money for Tibby's car and the rent. And remember, guys, she's saving to go to London and she doubts if her mother would be able to contribute when she comes home. Maybe she can borrow some of her mom's pension money for the 20,000 rand she needs for the trip. And things get quite hectic here. A gust of wind seizes her wig and Lena runs about the cars to get it. And Gerard Kaifi recognizes her, quite surprised to see her there. And he forces her to get in by stopping with the emergency lights of his car on. And in a friendly way, Kaifi Gerard, he asks whether it is wise for her to be on the streets. And shouldn't she be at school? After all, it is her matric year. So can you imagine the scenes when all of this happens? Kaifi, she's in his car. Then all of a sudden, he sees someone that looks like Lin. Oh, wait, it is Lin. Then he ushers her, hey, just, just get in the car quickly. Just just get in the car. Quickly, quickly. But, you know, in, in a nice way, because Kofi is a very friendly kind of guy. Can you imagine the car behind them? Like, what is just going... How is this beggar's, like, wig just come off? And now this guy is like, hey, come inside the car. And then she goes inside the... Like, you know, if I was behind that car, I'd be so confused. But anyway... That was a pretty hectic thing. And yeah, anyway, the church is in a position to help people like them. I don't really like that, but the, ter- the church is just in a position to help them. And all Lin has to do is just list their expenses. So Lin experiences understanding and sincerity. And Kefi also mentions a music post at the primary school. And he asks Lin to do babysitting for them. So yeah, there's another way to make some money. Lin... And then has a dream about her mom and him, him being her father. And he, he's holding her crying mom. And Rua says, good and bad. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit mixed up. I love Rua's philosophy toward life. And it's the first time in two years, Lin sees her father. Lin calls Donovan and accepts his offer of work at the salon, but for 40 bucks an hour. However, no one may call her angel. That's her condition. Don't call me angel. He says that he will call her back. And she does her homework and lists all of the expenses for Kaifi. Look, Kaifi, this is all we got to do. Can the church please help? And she wonders what will happen to Brahm. Three o'clock that night, Lin sees Brahm in front of the television, watching a recording of a news bulletin. This news bulletin, it's about Rian Kreivachen, one of the presenters. I think he worked for ENCA, talking about two prokuriers, two attorneys whose names had been struck from the role and each sentenced to four years imprisonment for the embezzlement of millions and millions of rands. Lin sees this, sneak backs to bed. Uh, Sneak backs to bread. Uh, Bread. Bed. Uh, Brahm doesn't see her at all. So Brahm is just silently going through all of these emotions by himself. 